uh, reclaiming my time. Um, the, the gentleman mentioned the Buffett rule, and maybe I'll talk about that as well uh, very briefly here, because I think the uh, gentleman from Arizona did a, a great job in, in showing that this is uh, really all about politics, as all this uh, so-called Buffett rule policy is. Um, there's uh, uh, a gentleman named Charles Krauthammer, uh, who happens to be, I believe, uh, one of the uh, smartest, uh, most interesting uh, political uh, commentators, uh, pundits, uh, in the land. And uh, I saw him talk about the Buffett rule and what a farce it is the other evening. And he illustrated it a little bit differently, but it's the same uh, type of illustration, one that brings it, I think, down to earth. He indicated he had the numbers run on this from a very reputable organization. And if the dollars were collected from the so-called, on the Buffett tax for the next 250 years, so the next 250 years this tax is collected, and he commented that that is uh, longer than the Republic has been in existence. Uh, the United States of America, this is longer than our existence. So you collect it for the next 250 years. Do you know how much we would actually uh, collect from that relative to the deficit, which is what this is supposed to do, pay down the deficit? It wouldn't cover last year's deficit alone. So not one year of the Obama deficit would be covered by the so-called Buffett rule if we collected it for 250 years. So it's nothing but pure politics. Uh, don't be fooled by that. Now, Mr. Speaker, as small businesses across the country uh, fight to make ends meet and stay out of debt, the federal government continues to dig itself into a hole with its exorbitant spending habits. Small businesses are burdened with massive regulations brought on by Obamacare. They're further plagued by the threat of tax increases, significant tax increases next year should the relief from the 2001 and 2003 tax cuts be allowed to expire. And that's what some people, uh, particularly those on the other side of the aisle, would like to happen. They would like the tax cuts to go away. In other words, if tax cuts go away, taxes go up. And this wasn't on the very wealthy, it was on virtually all Americans, middle class folks, uh, people that take advantage of the child tax credit, a whole range of people in the middle, and yes, at upper income levels as well. Um, so a lot of folks would be hit very hard uh, with this, particularly small business folks, because uh, the so-called wealthy in this country, many of them are small business folks. Again, as I mentioned before, 70 percent of the jobs in this country are created by those folks. So if you're trying to bring unemployment rate down, why would you want to uh, put additional burdens on the people that are actually creating the jobs? Uh, Mr. Speaker, tax issues are the single most significant set of regulatory burdens for most small businesses. A recent NFIB Research Foundation study, the NFIB, by the way, is the National Federation of Independent Businesses, that study found that four of the top ten small business problems were tax-related. Just this week, struggling families and businesses were forced to give the government more of their hard-earned money to satisfy the hungry appetite of government bureaucracies. Mr. Speaker, enough's enough. Confiscatory tax rates and fiscal irresponsibility have got to come to an end. Small businesses across the country are fighting to keep their doors open and keep their lights on. It's shameful for the federal government to expect these hardworking taxpayers to foot the bill for GSA excursions to Las Vegas and inept corporate schemes like Solyndra, while the backbone of our economy, which is the small businesses, continue to suffer. After all, American small businesses are responsible, as I said before, for 70 percent of the jobs that are created in this country. Why do we want to continue to make life so difficult for them? Why are they the target for the left in this House so often? The America I know is a nation where hard work creates opportunities for success. After all, that's what our forefathers were seeking in the first place. At the founding of our nation, small business owners came to this land to escape excessive taxation and cumbersome regulation. These were families of farmers and builders, traders, inventors, and merchants. It's disheartening that today it's our very own government that's creating uh, the job-killing taxation and regulation. 
Our economy is still struggling to rebound from the worst recession since the Great Depression, and we must support the engine that will propel America forward. This engine has always been fueled by hard work and an economic climate that rewards success. When I'm back home in my district in greater Cincinnati, I make a point to frequently meet with small business owners to talk about their successes as well as their struggles. I too often hear that the burden of taxes and regulations coupled with great uncertainty is keeping these businesses from growing and in many cases even forcing many of them to close their doors altogether. That's why I'm a co-sponsor of H.R. 9, the Small Business Tax Cut Act. If passed, this legislation would amend the Internal Revenue Code to allow American businesses a tax deduction of 20 percent. This is common sense. It's a fair bill that would help small business owners to keep more of what they've earned to invest in expansion and hiring. That's the important thing, hiring Americans who now need those jobs. We still have over 8 percent that are unemployed. I urge my colleagues to support this critical legislation that will be a shot in the arm to small businesses across the nation. And if there are any of my uh, colleagues that would uh, uh, have any additional things I'd like to say, we would welcome them at this time. If not, I've got a few more. Can I ask the, uh, the speaker how, many, uh, how much time do we have left? The gentleman has 16 minutes remaining. How many, six? 16. Okay. All right. The, um, one of the other issues that we haven't covered too much here, and, and let me talk about this very briefly, uh, is the impact that the high cost of energy, gasoline in particular, uh, what kind of difficulty that's causing small businesses uh, across the country. Because I hear this all the time uh, from my small business uh, constituents. And, you know, it's not surprising that energy prices and gas prices in particular have been going up so much. They're double, uh, the gas prices alone at the pump, they're double uh, what they were when the Obama administration uh, took over. And that's, that's most unfortunate. But it's really not surprising when, when you consider that the person that President Obama appointed to be the head of energy in this country, uh, the chief mind about energy and what we should do about it, it's the Secretary of Energy, Stephen Chu. Stephen Chu, a couple of months before President Obama appointed him to that position, said that it was his goal, what we ought to try to do, what we ought to strive for is to raise the price of gasoline in this country, energy costs, prices of gasoline, for example, to European levels. Think of that. Now, they've got approximately, it depends on the country you're talking about, but it's around $9 a gallon. They do liters over there, but it's about $9 a gallon. Um, now, we're not there yet, but unfortunately, we're well on our way. It's approaching $4 back in my district in, in Cincinnati. Uh, here in Washington, just the other day, I had to uh, fill up, and it was about $4.50. So we're not quite there yet, um, but we're, we're approaching that. Um, it, it's just un, it's unbelievable uh, that we're in this state. Um, but really, I guess shouldn't be surprising when you consider that the person that President Obama put in control of our energy policy here in this country said that it was his goal to get energy prices up to European levels. And as I say, unfortunately, uh, we're, we're well on our way. And those gas prices, that's what the delivery trucks have to pay for the small business folks that are delivering things to, to towns or, uh, or the, the other things. Getting uh, products from other manufacturers when they come in, they cost more. So they can't charge uh, the consumers as much, or if they do, they drive those folks away. It's just, it's a vicious circle. We need to get energy prices down in, the, in this country, and unfortunately, uh, they're on their way up. And another, I think, terrible mistake that this administration has made uh, is to basically shut the door on the Keystone Pipeline. This is, this is uh, oil uh, sands from uh, Canada, our friendly neighbor to the north, our largest supplier uh, of, of uh, petroleum, uh, by the way, is, is from Canada. And this is a pipeline that would mean significant numbers of jobs here in the United States, tens of thousands of, of jobs. And if we ever needed jobs, we know it's now. And those are good paying jobs, many of them union jobs. But the president has decided that, no, we're not going to make this decision until maybe after the election. 
So tens of thousands of jobs are at risk here. And what Canada's been pretty clear what they're going to do. If, if we're not going to accept the oil in our country and build the pipeline, it's quite likely that they'll go ahead and, and build this pipeline through Canada to British Columbia and ship that oil that ought to be going to the U.S. to China. You know, one of our biggest competitors in many ways, to China. Um, and if you know anything about China, the environmental controls that they have over there are far weaker than what we have in the United States. So if your goal is to make sure that you're protecting the, the environment, and that's what many of the, the president's allies, the really radical left-wing environmentalists who are, who are fighting against the Keystone Pipeline, uh, if, if you buy the argument, uh, what they're saying, they want to protect the environment by not having that oil come, come down here and be refined in, in the Gulf. But the controls we have here are much stronger than what they are over in China. So the, you're not protecting uh, the environment at all uh, or climate change or anything else if you're going to allow them to spew out uh, what, what they usually do in, in China when, when they handle uh, refining and, and manufacturing oftentimes and, and a lot of other things. And we all know, we all know uh, how, the, how the, uh, the administration and their support for an organization like uh, Solyndra, how much tax dollars uh, were wasted uh, it, it, there and, and it goes on and on. So the, the energy policy in this in this country by this administration is impacting consumers. It's impacting you and me and anybody who goes uh, fills up at the gas pump nowadays. But it's also adversely impacting small businesses and job creation. And the, another thing that that this administration I believe has made a mistake, which is causing these high prices, is to continue to keep off limits uh, much of the outer continental shelf. Uh, the Gulf, the moratorium was disastrous for jobs in, in the Gulf region after the spill down there. And yes, it should have been investigated uh, very thoroughly. But a lot of those, those uh, derricks, the oil derricks, ended up leaving that area. They couldn't hold out with that cost, that expensive capital cost, over six months period of time. So they ended up off the coast of Brazil, uh, for example. And, and the president uh, famously said, uh, we'll be happy to buy your oil. Uh, Brazil. Well, you know, we can look at it all, all around the world, but we ought to be self-sufficient. And the president said he was interested in being uh, energy self-sufficient in this country, but his policies are anything but that. So he continues to put uh, off limits much of the outer continental shelf, uh, the disaster in the Gulf, uh, Anwar up in Alaska. Uh, the administration has continued to put off limits. Now, all these things, we do need to do what we do in an environmentally safe manner. And we have the ability to do that now. But again, this administration has shut this down. Um, that's affecting all of us in higher and higher gas prices. So it's, it's, uh, it's long overdue for this administration uh, to take a look, a long, hard look at what their policies are doing to the country uh, and, and to reconsider this to allow us to go after oil that we have available to us, uh, clean coal, uh, natural gas, a whole range of, of fuels that we have here in this country uh, so we don't have to be buying that from, from countries that oftentimes don't have our best interest uh, at heart. And it sends a lot of money over to countries uh, that uh, unfortunately a lot of the terrorism that's endangered the world and endangered us has come from that region. So those dollars aren't always spent in, in a way that's going to help the United States. So uh, it's time for the administration to, uh, uh, to turn its policies around. Uh, and uh, Mr. Speaker, with, uh, without further ado, I will uh, yield back the uh, balance of my time.